I was the treasurer of the New Zealand Debt Management Office uh, and also deputy secretary to the New Zealand Treasury. Uh, and I'd always been highly interested in the World Bank. In fact, I'd have, I had applied uh, two or three times before in my career. Uh, the World Bank Treasury was 250 people with a budget of around $55 million, um, full of enormously dedicated and talent, talented colleagues. Uh, and I realized that, uh, you know, leading uh, that institution uh, was, to be frank, it was the greatest job in the world. If, if you were interested in development and you were interested in finance, then this was, this was the place to be. It was a, it was a fantastic opportunity. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. Uh, and someone came into our room uh, and said, look, there's been a terrible, uh, terrible accident. A plane has uh, hit the World Trade Center. So I went into the trading room and there was a group of colleagues, as you'd expect, uh, all around the, um, around the Bloomberg screens and uh, looking at television. Um, and they showed a replay and, and I remember saying, I said, that's not, an, that's not an accident. Accidents like that never happen. This is terrorism. And just as we were looking, we saw the second plane. Oh my God. Oh my God. That looks like a second plane. It had an enormous effect on, on the bank and also, also the treasury. And indeed, uh, some colleagues had died uh, that we knew. We, uh, we got in some counselling. Uh, we offered that to uh, treasury colleagues uh, and quite a lot of counselling took place over the over the subsequent uh, week or so, um, but we all came came through it. But it was a very sober, um, very sad time. It was important that we uh, obtain uh, cheap financing to the extent that that we possibly could, uh, and certainly worthy of our credit standing, uh, and that we be innovative, uh, and that we be a leader. Uh, in the global financial markets, particularly for development financing. So we were, uh, we were issuing uh, some quite innovative bonds uh, at the time. We had developed a green bond, uh, which was really important. We'd done uh, some local currency financing as well, which was very interesting. Uh, most of the borrowing on the capital markets that we were doing at that time uh, was from Japan. Uh, we were doing a lot of Eurodashi transactions uh, and a lot of power reverse dual currency notes. We wanted to build uh, a stronger management team as we possibly could uh, and share a lot of information in the organisation uh, and you know, continue to build morale and empower colleagues. Ken Lay and Jennifer Johnson and Kalari had done absolutely brilliant work in, in setting up RAMP, uh, which was a wonderful achievement, getting that through the, through the board. Uh, and when I became treasurer, we had two clients. Uh, by the time I left, we had 20. You know, if you look at uh, sovereign debt managers around, around the world, um, it wasn't well developed in many countries. Uh, sovereign debt management at the time, uh, particularly in developing countries, and now we have these products available uh, and finance ministries or debt management offices to the extent that they existed uh, were charged with managing the largest portfolios in the, in the country in many cases. Uh, and I felt that we had a responsibility to be able to provide capacity building uh, and sovereign debt management uh, for developing countries. A couple of things I've learned over, over time is, is that organisations aren't resource constrained. They don't collapse because of lack of resources usually. 
um, they decline because they become ideas constrained. Uh, and I'm always conscious of that and therefore the, the power of innovation and process improvement of various types. And I think that's really important. Uh, and the World Bank Treasury has a wonderful reputation for being innovative. So, you know, I'd encourage it to always be uh, open on that front. And the second thing is, you know, I think it was Charles Darwin who said, look, it's not the strongest or the most intelligent that survive in terms of continuation of species. It's, it's the species that are most adaptive to change.